Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have this tutorial on this super, super easy headband with this twisted design in it. And this is totally suited for beginners. It's an easy stitch. It's just a single crochet. And then there's a certain way that you sew this together to make this really beautiful headband. Now this is a great project to use up a bit of yarn that you'll have over from another project. I have the Lavender Fields Pocket Shawl and this is what's remaining. I'll need a little bit more than that so I'll go into this Bernat Premium Yarn. It's a number four medium weight yarn, 100% acrylic and the color is Grand Purple. Of course you can use any size yarn you like, any gauge that you like, just so long as you use your corresponding hook size. I'm using a five millimeter and then a darning needle and some scissors. All right, so we'll start with a slip knot and a foundation chain. So to do a slip knot, you can just put the yarn around your finger and then around the thumb, bringing the loop in from behind. And if you're new to crochet, I do have a beginner crochet series and I do recommend that you check that out because that will show you everything from how to do a slip knot, how to do proper tension and how to do basic stitches and how to darn in tail ends and all of that. But I will be going quite slowly through this as well. So put your slip knot on your hook and you're going to create a foundation chain and you want this to be quite loose. And if you're new to crochet, you can always go up a half a size with your crochet hook uh, to do your foundation chain because you want it to be very loose. So yarn over, hold on to your tail with the opposite hand and pull the yarn through the loop and that's a chain one. And so keeping this quite loose on the shake of your shank of your hook, yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop. And that's a chain two. And again, yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop. So I'm making these chains quite loose and what you're going to do is create a foundation chain that is long enough to fit comfortably around your head and uh, you want it to be quite comfortable, not too tight, not too loose. So go ahead and do that and I'm going to create a chain that's 65 or 70 chains. So go ahead and do your foundation chain and I will see you at the end. Now, if you've used a larger crochet hook for the foundation chain, you can switch back to the regular size hook now. And I have a, a 19 inch long chain and 65 chains. And of course, that'll be unique to you depending on the size you're making this. So once you have your foundation chain, the length, the length you like, and you've changed hooks if needed, um, you're going to do a chain one and that will be your turning chain and then we're going to work back with a row of single crochet. Now each chain has these two front loops and then this back loop and this is kind of a bump on the back and we want to work into this back bump. So you'll turn your work uh, and going into this bump here not the one where your turning chain is. You go into the first one after your turning chain, going into that back bump, you'll yarn over, bring your yarn through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops and that's a single crochet. So again, working into that back bump, going under that back bump, yarn over, pull your yarn through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops. And again, going into that back bump, going underneath the one loop and working your single crochet into that stitch. And so you'll work a single crochet all the way along on your chain and going into this back bump. And at the end of this row, you will have however many stitches you started with. So for me, it'll be 65. So carry on and I'll see you at the end of this row. Welcome back. So coming to the end of row one, there's a couple of more stitches to do here. 
So I have 65 single crochets. Now, if you'd like, you can see if this fits comfortably around your head now that you have a row of single crochet, because this is the time to adjust it. It might be um, too tight or too loose, so you might have to add or subtract a couple of stitches and undo it here. But if it fits good, you can do a chain one and turn your work. And this is where the pattern repeat begins. So the first row, you'll skip your turning chain and you have these V stitches at the top of your work and there's your top loop and your bottom loop. And for this row, you'll work into the top loop with a single crochet. So not in the turning chain, but into that first top loop after the turning chain and do a single crochet in the top loop of every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, so coming to the end of row two, you wanna make sure that you're working into the right stitches as you come to the end. And you can see your stitches have this obvious V stitch at the top. And as you come around the end here, that isn't an obvious V stitch. So there's just two stitches left at the end of this row to work the single crochets into those obvious V stitches. So that's the end of row two, chain one and turn your work. And that doesn't count as a stitch, that's your turning chain. So now we're going to do the row three repeat. And for this row, you're going to do your single crochet into the bottom loop, the loop closest to you. So not the back loop, the one that's closest to you. So going into that front loop, you work your single crochet, again, not in the turning chain, but into that first stitch after your turning chain. And then going into the front loop. And um, these are a little trickier to see because the stitches are kind of facing away from you. So, but working into that loop that's closest to you with a single crochet. And so for this row, you'll work a single crochet into that front loop, the lower loop that's closest to you. You'll work that all the way to the end of the row. Great. So coming to the end of row three, working into those front loops. So remember, as you get to the end of the row, you're looking for these obvious V stitches that are at the end of the row. So I have two more obvious V stitches. And then there's this bump here, and that's the turning chain. It's not a stitch. So going into those obvious V stitches only, you'll finish up the row with your single crochets. And of course, you can count your stitches. You should have 65 single crochets at the end of this row or whatever your beginning chain count was. So then you'll chain one and turn your work. And from here on in is your row two and three repeat and you'll repeat those two rows until you get the band to the width that you want, or the depth, I guess, something about four or four and a half inches. So go ahead and carry on, and we'll see you after a few more rows. All right, here we go. I have the band as deep as I want. So I have four and a half inches or 11.5 centimeters. And I've repeated rows two and three, five more times for a total of 13 rows. And for row 14, you just wanna repeat row two one more time. And that's the row where you're going into the back loop or the top loop. So you'll have a total of 14 rows all together if you're making the band this deep. If you wanna go deeper, you can carry on with the the row repeats, but you do want to finish up with your very last row being the row to repeat. And then all you're going to do is cut yourself a tail and you want to make it quite long. You want to make it quite generous because we're going to use that to sew the band together. And then you can do a chain one to fasten off and snug that up. And then we're going to sew this together. Now the lovely thing about this particular pattern is that you can actually use either side of the fabric for your pattern because the back side actually has a really nice pattern as well. Or you can use the front side. 
So whichever side you want to have for your uh, front side, and unfortunately this is not a reversible headband. So what you want to do is thread your needle onto your tail end, the long tail end, and then you'll bring your right sides together and then fold the band in half in this direction with the right sides together. So it's just like that. So they're kind of pinched together. And then you're going to bring those two pieces together and divide the band into thirds. So you'll have a third that's overlapped and a third on each side. So you'll have to fuss with this a little bit and just line that up so it's in thirds and just fiddle and fuss with it a bit here. And there we go. So you have a third gap here, third gap and third in the middle with all the layers. And of course we have four layers of fabric here and on each side you'll have two layers of fabric. So then you'll take your darning needle and you can come through the, the back of the knot. And so you, that's all joined together and then come through the second piece and then pick up the corner of the third piece and then come through the fourth piece, just like that. And pull that through and make sure it's nice and snug. And then you're just going to do a whip stitch. So you'll go back to the back and come through that first layer and then the second layer and the third and the fourth layer. And then you'll just go along and whip stitch those four layers together, picking up all four layers and just working into the ends of the rows. They're not really stitches here. It's just um, yarn at the end of the rows. And I'm at the end here and I'm going to do one more stitch, just giving that one more round there. And then what you do is you turn it to the side and then you'll open up that uh, the two layers there and fold them towards each other and you can darn that tail in later you know i've lost my light and here we go i have light back so that's better so turning it on its side and uh, i should have darned that in earlier oh i'm losing my light again oh well I'll just carry on. So you just flatten these um, front pieces out and line up your middle row here and line those two rows up. And then you'll do the same thing where you'll just stitch these two pieces together now and join them with a whip stitch in the same way and pull that nice and snug. And again, you're working into the end of the rows here. There's no real stitches that you're working into. So just pick up the fabric on the edges uh, with the needle and thread and work that along and just going right to the end there. And then just sort of straighten it out. And then I'm going to go down in underneath this um, fold here and create just a, a square knot. You could just darn it in, but I like to create a knot uh, because it's going to be stretched. I think having a, a knot is a good idea. And, you know, I never have luck with tying knots like this. I don't know why it's so awkward for me. But anyways, there's the knot. Now you can go ahead and darn in the, the tail end here and then just cut your yarn off and then you can go ahead and darn in this tail end. I'll just quickly do that going in the other direction and then back again and snip that off. 
And, you know, this actually looks not bad for the back side. It's uh, not too bad. You could almost even put a flower on that. That wouldn't be too bad. But here is the magic. And when you flip it right side out and look at how lovely that knot looks. Isn't that amazing? It's just such a beautiful design. And there you go. So this is really a super easy project. It's really great for beginners. It makes a great gift. If you do craft shows, you can crochet these up so quickly. And so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. Thank you for joining me.